What's up, soldiers? Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Always a pleasure having you guys here in the kitchen with me. It is Lent. There is a ton of recipe requests via Instagram at CaribbeanPod. Chris, we need to get our fish on. Now, all I got downstairs, I found some smoked herring. While I was in Barbados, I think three, four years ago, I had this dish, man, roasted breadfruit, which was cored, and then um, stewed red herring was put in there. Mmm! Them bitch and them could rock that breadfruit, boy. But here's the thing. While in some islands it's called stewed red herrings, don't worry, I'm from, it's just called smoked herring. So smoked herring, stewed. You're gonna love it, man. Stay tuned. Before we get started, here I have my smoked herring fillets soaking in water. I've already drained it two times in hot water because I'm trying to remove some of the, the oiliness and the, the salt and everything else and kind of rehydrate it a bit. But before we move on to that part there, three little warnings. One, wear gloves or your hands. The smell of this thing, man, it's going to be in your hands for days. You're going to have that smoky, not fishy, but smoky smell. Two, Burn that scented candle in your house because your house, your kitchen, will have that smell as well too. A kid already complaining in this house here. And three, get fillets. Now my dad is old school, right? And he would get the actual smoked fish, nice and whole. And he would roast it on an open flame and then strip it down to the fillets. But now nah, we need all that work. No, 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 you don't need all that work. And you see the tiny bones that you're seeing there? You can take off the big ones like this, right? But the tiny, tiny ones, don't fret too much. I know I'm talking quite a bit, but I like to explain. I'm going to drain all that water out. And I'm going to give them a good squeeze. I don't know if you guys can see me on camera doing this. I'm going to squeeze out a lot of that water. And these are the, the fillets now. And all we want to do is break them down a bit. And man, the smell, yo. It is strong, it is a something I love to eat, but you see the smell on your hands after? And then worse, you're gonna be belching or burping like crazy. See the bigger pieces of, of um, bones I'm just removing. I just wanna go in and break these up quite a bit here. Try and squeeze out much of the water. I'm gonna give this another squeeze. Um, Cause we're trying to get the essence of the smoked herring. So I'm just gonna continue doing this and then we shall get to cooking. So here we go, cooking time. We need a nice dose of olive oil in there. If you want to use coconut oil, be my guest. You can certainly use coconut oil. I like for this recipe, especially using olive oil and two medium onions. Let's give that a quick little stir. My heat is on low at this point now because I want to sweat these down just for about two or three minutes. As the onion sweats down there on that low heat, here's where I'm going to go in with some fresh ground black pepper. I've got here one green Caribbean sunshine, a scotch bonnet pepper that is if you're new to my channel. So seeds and everything if you want you can remove the seeds and the white membrane there i want it to have that sort of kick so caribbean sunshine scotch bonnet if you want to use habanero if you want to you know if you want to leave all the pepper all together totally up to you but it makes a nice little addition and i've got here three cloves of garlic i just smashed with the back of my knife there heat still on low let that go for a further minute along with some fresh thyme Please, try to use fresh thyme. You see that dried stuff there? No, 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 not my friend at all, boy. Now here's where I'm gonna go in with some diced sweet pepper or bell pepper. And it's a little, it's gonna be a little bit more tough, so this is why I'm going in with it now. Just give that another stir, two more minutes, and then we'll move on again. Another quick little stir. Now let's create a little hole in the center there and we're going to go in with about a tablespoon and a half of that puree tomato or tomato paste. <laughs> tomato, tomato. Ah, what's wrong with this guy boy? 
Ich hätte noch alle auch eine Akzent dran drin. <lacht> Now remember, if you cannot get tomato paste, I, I don't recall seeing it that often in the Caribbean, if at all, feel free to use ketchup. Some tomato ketchup in here will work great, about a, a tablespoon and a half, two tablespoons of it. And the reason why I like adding the tomato paste at that point there is because by touching the surface here, that hot surface, the heat will help bring out the natural sugars of that tomato paste. And that is what we're looking for. It's a nice little balance of sweet along with that heat. And here goes all that prepared. Oh, one fell out of the pot. Oh, look at that. We didn't, we didn't sort out that piece. That fell again sorted out. Don't worry. Along with scallions and some cherry tomato. I'm only using cherry tomato because it seems to be the only thing coming on sale here in Canada lately. It's the middle of winter so what we get relatively cheap is what we're buying, right? But if you want to use a large tomato that's fine. All the ingredients I use here today will be listed down in the description of the video as I always do. We need to give this a good stir now just to make sure all the ingredients are thoroughly mixed. I'm going to crank up my heat now to medium high. All the while the heat was on low if you recall. So I'm going to turn up my heat because we need to add some liquid in here to create a sort of a gravy or a sauce to allow everything to fully cook all the way through and all those flavors to really shine Give that another quick stir. Heat on medium, I said. And here is where we're gonna go in with that water. Give it a good stir and bring that up to a boil. And if you're wondering what I'm having that stewed red herring or smoked herring with, I have here a taro. So I'm, while I can't source um, breadfruit at this point, you see this taro here, or ground provision, or dashin, yam, cassava, anything will work, but this is what I have available today. So we got a nice little bubble happening, happening there now. I'm going to turn my heat down to low, and um, we're going to give it a quick stir, and we want to just let that simmer away for about three to five minutes, nothing more. But at this point, I'm going to leave the lid open because I want to dry up some of that gravy or water or liquid that you're seeing let's close up let's close up burp, burp, that you're seeing on the bottom there the sort of final thing i like going in with half of a lime the juice of half of a lime i'm just going to turn off my stove because i know the residual heat in this clay pot is going to continue cooking things for me and you all know i love me some parsley near the end here Chris here, CaribbeanPot.com, always a pleasure having you all here in the kitchen with me. Whether you observe Lent or not, this is an awesome dish with your ground provision, as I said, with your breadfruit, with your potatoes, whatever it is. Always a pleasure having you guys here in the kitchen with me. Yo, I re up all this off, man. What's up, soldiers? Don't forget to click subscribe if you've already clicked subscribe. Hit that bell notification thing. I want to all you missing out on the new videos, man. Come on, click.